Hey everyone, Gil Gross here. Post match, Jasmine Paolini versus Barbora Krejcikova, Wimbledon 2024 final. If you're not here for spoilers, click off the video. Krejcikova wins her second major, six four in the third over Jasmine Paolini. A unexpected final on both fronts, really. Paolini has surged at the last two slams at a level that I don't think anybody could have wrapped their head around, including her, admittedly. And Krejcikova, obviously, she has reached great heights before, but was having a really poor year after making the Australian Open quarterfinal. And yeah, there were some injury issues, and she missed March, couldn't get it going on the clay, won a couple of matches in Eastbourne that weren't really highly, you know, against opponents who weren't highly ranked. Uh, you were looking at a player coming into Wimbledon who hadn't beaten a top 80 player in over six months and had a losing record on the year, had never passed the fourth round at Wimbledon. Paolini had never won a match in the main draw at Wimbledon. But they had incredible runs to the final. And Krejcikova now, you look at her resume, it is something. Quarterfinal at the Australian Open. Won Roland Garros in 2021. Won Wimbledon in 2024. Quarterfinal at the U.S. Open. I think that was also 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Got up to number two in the world. She's got a Masters 1000 title in Dubai. She's got eight career titles. And then you have the women's doubles resume, which is Hall of Fame worthy in itself. Career Grand Slam in doubles. Got to number one. WTA Finals, Olympic Gold, 18 career titles, basically can't be better. By the way, she's won mixed doubles at the Australian Open three times. So she has now 12 slam titles across the three disciplines, women's singles, women's doubles, mixed doubles. Both of her slam titles have been, in a similar light, kind of a narrative-shifting win, right? Because... When she won RG in 2021, she was looked at until that point, and she had a big week the week before, I believe, in Strasbourg. But until that point, she was looked at as more of a doubles great, a top player in doubles but not singles, and she quieted any thought that that was the case. But I think three years later, in her in winning her second slam title, she has quieted the overwhelming and prevailing thought that that title run at RG would be her only slam in singles. So I guess my takeaway from this in terms of the result is you're not going to find anybody doubting her ever again. I mean, that's what she's earned. It, she is always forever going to be someone who, when in the draw, you're going to have to think, all right, let's watch out in a serious way. Let's have our antennas up. And understand the possibility that she might get hot and she's capable of the highest level possible. Now, as for this final, I think Krejcikova's forehand was the star of the show, really. Uh, it was a third rail in this match. Whenever Paolini touched it, whenever she didn't go there with quality, with depth, with, with something, she was getting hurt badly, mostly on the cross court sometimes on the down the line or the inside out. Krejcikova's forehand is not a blow you away with pace shot, but she's so good at hitting into a very, very precise location at about 80% pace for her. So she, she never swings out of her shoes. She has, and I wonder if this contributes to it, she has this very smooth, flowy technique on her forehand. There are no hitches. There's no stiffness. It all comes through very kind of clean and easy, fluid like water. And maybe maybe that contributes to her ability to, to put the ball on a dime, put the ball in these perfect locations all the time. Uh, but she's able to, again, hit her 80% pace ball and just kind of tuck it next to, to a sideline or tuck it in the corner. And that's enough to do serious damage. She doesn't need to kill the ball. Now, in order to set up her forehand, she had to serve well, especially in the third set. But, you know, in the first set, I don't think Paolini fully understood what she needed to do from a pattern standpoint. I'll get to that in a moment. But if you look at the first set, 
Krejcikova made 19 of 21 first serves. And similar to her forehand, it was the precision that was really doing the talking when it comes to her her serve. She was not serving any bigger than Paolini, but she was serving much more precise. She was making Paolini, who obviously at five foot four doesn't have a huge wingspan. She was making her reach for the ball time and time again. And then she was playing dictating large and in charge tennis with her forehand. She's able to land some aggressive returns too. And, and that also helped her set up her forehand, but I just thought it completely took over the first set. Now, I think to start the second set, Paolini at this point did recognize we need to change the patterns of these rallies and Jasmine starts finding the backhand early on and it changes everything because Krejcikova's backhand wasn't operating at even nearly the level that her forehand was. So Paolini started serving to it. She started serving to Krejcikova's backhand. And that's that's very important because she doesn't have a serve that she can put anywhere and kind of be safe on. Like she needs to find a safe spot with her serve because, especially the second serve, because it's so slow. And she found the safe spot. So she was going to Krejcikova's backhand. She was no longer getting hurt on the return. She, on the forehand side, stopped taking it into the deuce side with regularity, especially from the middle of the court. When when you have a forehand in the middle of the court, you get to kind of set the pattern. So which pattern am I going to set? Am I going to take that kind of inside-out forehand and try to set the rally on Krejcikova's backhand? Or am I, am I going to pull it across my body and take it into the deuce side? And in the second set, Paolini was always choosing the former. Let's go into Krejcikova's backhand, and, and we'll play on that ad side cross court. And she's also she also did a, a really good job sometimes when she was moving out to her forehand side of taking the ball down the line, not necessarily even being aggressive with it, but just knowing that she needed to stay away from Krejcikova's forehand. And by the way, this gives me some insight into the Rybakina matchup. And why Krejcikova, I could not watch that semifinal. I had to travel. Luckily, I did catch Vekic Paulini, which was just an absolute thriller. It was incredible. Uh, But thinking about watching the patterns with Paulini against Krejcikova and how important it was for Paulini to find Krejcikova's backhand, especially off of her forehand, it does shed light a little bit on what I suspect happened at least partially in the Rybakina matchup, Rybakina always pulls across on her forehand. She hits forehands cross court. She does not like to to change direction down the line. And when she has a forehand in the middle of the court, she really favors going into the deuce side with that forehand. So watching how important it was for Paulini to not hit that direction, it makes me wonder, was Rybakina going into the deuce court over and over again and not really exploiting Krejcikova uh, through her backhand? Probably. Because what happened when Paulini kept finding Krejcikova's backhand, she doesn't hit it as hard or as clean. So Paulini can play off of it. She can attack off of it. And then, you know, when Krejcikova was looking to do damage, she obviously missed more often. And she, when she was nervous, she started slicing it. And she hit some attackable slices. It wasn't a aggressive, biting, low backhand slice. It was more of the floater. Now, the problem, the one problem with Paolini playing this pattern, which hurt her a little bit in the third at times, is Paolini's backhand isn't the best. It's not a it's not a rock-solid backhand. I actually prefer Paolini's forehand. So Jasmine was also having to set the rally on her weaker wing. It was still good. It still helped her, especially because Paolini's quick to, to run around and hit forehands from, from her backhand side. But there were moments where Paolini would miss backhands or be a little bit shaky on her two-hander, which somewhat minimized the reward that she could get from just trying to go backhand and backhand with Krejcikova. And you can see that at the third set. Um, you could see that a little bit at three all where second point of the rally Paulini misses a backhand um in in that exchange I want to pick it up though from the third set at at 30 all and the main difference in the third set as 
Paulini knew what pattern she wanted to play, and Krejcikova knew what she wanted to do, which is dominate with the forehand. So at this point, they both have an awareness of what needs to happen. So what was the difference maker? I would argue the serve was the difference maker in the third set. So Paulini's broken at 3-all, and at 3-all, 30-all, she hits a serve to Krejcikova's forehand. I thought that was a big mistake. She gets hurt with the return. Krejcikova hits a forehand winner on the fourth shot of the rally. So fourth shot of the rally, that means from Krejcikova's perspective, that's return plus one, and she has a forehand winner. Doesn't need to hit a backhand there. And on such a big point, I thought that was a little bit of a blip from Paulini. I don't know if she was trying to change it up, catch Krejcikova off guard, but it didn't work. She does save the break point. At deuce, they get into an extended rally. Krejcikova's backhand does a good job of holding up, actually. She works the point well enough to get into a four, to get a forehand, and she forces an error with the forehand cross court. On the break point, Paulini double faults. She actually challenged her first serve, missed it narrowly, and then she double faults. So you look at the 30-all point, you look at the add-out point, didn't really give herself a chance to win from the back of the court because she didn't serve well enough to do so. And that's a stark contrast to what we were looking at with Krejcikova. So let's now look at the last game, 5-4, Krejcikova looking to serve out the Wimbledon title. And what we're going to focus on here is Krejcikova's serve and forehand against Paulini's ability to find her backhand and win from the back of the court. And coming into this game, I thought to myself, the key to this game is how many backhands can Paulini make Krejcikova hit? That's what I thought to myself. I could have not imagined how true that would end up being or how extreme that would end up being. Because sometimes when I talk about tactical keys or I get things in my head, it's subtleties. It's just the fine margins, a couple points here or there. This was not that at all. It was like in-your-face tactics and keys that are that are playing out in a big way. So let's go through every point, shall we? I mean, come on. This is 5-4, third set, Wimbledon title on the line. Why not? Let's go through every single point. Love all. Krejcikova, serve plus forehand inside and winner. All right, serve and forehand, bang, uh, 15 love. Second point, this is a backhand, a backhand exchange, and this is a Paulini backhand stutter. So Paulini makes a backhand cross court unforced error going long, just trying to trade. So again, not the most consistent shot. That hurt her. 30 love, Krejcikova double fault. 30-15. Krejcikova, serve plus one, forehand. She got tight on this forehand. This is a forehand that I think, if it wasn't such a big moment for her, I think Krejcikova would have killed it, put it away on the cross court. Instead, she lets the rally develop because she didn't do enough damage on the forehand. Paulini hits a backhand cross court trade with some good angle, and Krejcikova misses her backhand long. I think she was trying to take the ball down the line. It ended up not only going long, but bleeding middle. It was kind of an ugly backhand, unforced error. 30-all, backhand a backhand rally. Krejcikova backhand, sails long, unforced error. These are extended rallies where Paulini is keeping the ball on Krejcikova's backhand, occasionally maybe going to the forehand, but then going right back to the backhand. Okay, break point. Chance for 5-all, 30-40. Krejcikova, serve plus short forehand, cross-court approach, backhand volley winner. Serve, forehand, boom, point Krejcikova. Deuce, Krejcikova, serve, forehand cross court, forces the error. Add in, serve, Paulini gets the return to the backhand. Backhand down the line, unforced error. So the difference is the return. Avoiding the forehand off the return. We're back to deuce. At deuce, Krejcikova, serve plus forehand, cross court, big, forehand down the line, approach, now, this is a point where Paulini's scrambling comes into play. Krejcikova actually does everything that she wanted to do, makes a good serve, able to dominate with her forehand. She comes forward behind her forehand, and Paulini scrambling backhand down the line hard on the pass. Krejcikova pops up the volley. Easy forehand pass for Paulini. Uh, this is, at this point, the crowd explodes. They're behind Paulini. It's one of the more kind of energetic and hype moments in the match because of what Paulini was able to pull off on this point. 
All right. Can she convert? Another break point. Second serve. Krejcikova goes out wide on her second serve. Paolini has a backhand. She's going to take this backhand return cross court. She doesn't hit it well enough to get it to Krejcikova's backhand. Barbora runs around, hits a forehand inside out, which does damage, and then hits another forehand inside out, which is a winner. So what's the lethal error here? Again, Paolini's backhand leaving a little bit to be desired. She doesn't get it fully cross court with enough depth or enough angle. And she hits the third rail, Krejcikova's forehand. I never know if people know the third rail reference. That's like on a train track, the 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 third rail, which you get electrocuted by um, if, you, if you touch it. Anyway, I think it's like a great analogy in tennis. So I like to use it, but I don't know if people follow it. Um, now it's back to deuce. Krejcikova hits an ace. All right, the serve comes through. Add in. Paolini gets the return to the backhand. Krejcikova slices cross court. Paolini, backhand cross court. Krejcikova, backhand slice, net. Unforced error. She's nervous again. She's going to the slice. She's made a couple of unforced errors trying to hit over the backhand. Now she's missing the slice. She can't find answers on her backhand. Is she still going to win the game? Can she still get out of it? Deuce. Second serve. Krejcikova. This is big. She hits a good body second serve into Paolini's backhand, and she gets the miss. She gets the miss off of her second serve uh, with Paolini kind of jammed on her backhand, trying to go inside out and hitting the net. Championship point, Krejcikova nails the serve out wide, service winner. Paolini got a racket on it, but really was off balance trying to make that stab return. Game, set, match, championship, Krejcikova, How about that? So her serve and her forehand stole enough points for her there. And Paolini couldn't make quite enough returns to the backhand. When she did, she basically won the point every time. Really incredible last game. High drama. And uh, really, you know, again, congratulations to uh, to Krejcikova and her fans. Quick word on Paolini. Um, A lot of people have been asking me for for, um, a pretty long time to... Talk about Paolini, which I've wanted to do because I am, I've become such a fan. I think everybody has. I think it's hard not to love watching her play tennis because of the the joy and the way that she competes. And that's the thing that you have to start. You have to start out with her, uh, because, like, I know these things alone cannot help you. Again, on their own, you're not going to win tennis matches with a positive attitude, fighting extremely hard on every point, having great body language, having high intensity. Those things are not going to make you a better player, but those things will maximize your ability. And there is a massive, I think it can make a massive difference at this level. And as far as attitude, body language, and intensity go, I don't think you can set a higher standard than what Paolini has shown at the last couple slams. I don't think it's possible. I think it is it is S tier. I, I mean, it reminds me of Rafa, the way she's fighting for every point, and the way she's able to maintain the same level of compete without really having any kind of emotional dips and uh, really enjoying it at the same time, so not getting too nervous either. So I I just think mentally it's been unbelievable. And frankly, I think the only explanation that she's been able to give as far as her recent surge is belief. Like That's the only answer that I think she's been able to explain as far as I'm concerned, as far as I've heard— where she had that big week in Dubai. She wins Dubai, and it seems like something in her mind changed where she felt like she could do it. And somehow I think that belief has translated into just this dynamite mental game. If if I had a junior or if I had a kid right now and I had to say, 
here is someone who you should try to emulate in terms of how you carry yourself around a tennis court, Jasmine Paolini, period. That's who I would point to right now. Now, technically and tactically, I I had watched Paolini in the past and I, I've always admired her, her firepower, her explosivity for her size. So she obviously moves well. But anybody who called her a grinder at any point wasn't watching carefully because she she packed a big punch off of her forehand and always did. I wonder if maybe now she's using it a little bit more. Uh, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe she's using the big forehand and that power a little more liberally. Or maybe she is... Maybe she's giving her, her her speed more of a chance because she's become more solid. Like, I don't know the consistency that she's shown um, and the toughness that she's shown in rallies. I don't know that that was always there. But when I say I don't know, I really mean I don't know because I, I hadn't watched enough of Jasmine as a player outside the top 50. And I'd watched, I'd called some of her matches here and there and I'd watched her a little bit, but I hadn't watched her enough to to really pinpoint this is what looks different about her game full stop no doubt about it i can't really tell you for sure is she coming in more because that's something that i've noticed particularly at wimbledon that i did not remember at all from watching her before and she's got really good hands at the net great volley technique and excellent drop volleys and that's helped her but i don't know if that would be enough because it's not like she's it's not like she's constantly in. I think that did help her throughout Wimbledon quite a bit. So those are some theories. I, I hadn't seen the volleying to this extent. I had always seen the forehand power, always, but maybe she's using it more. And I just think she is a little more stubborn about making balls and limiting her errors as well. Those are my best theories for Paolini. But I really do hope, and it's it's discouraging to lose two straight major finals, you know, she's had great, great perspective as far as what she said after these major finals in terms of, I need to understand that it's amazing that I was here. I can't get too down on myself. I have to keep smiling. That's kind of been her tone. I, I really hope that she keeps this up, that she's not discouraged, and uh, that she's a factor moving forward. I think she's great for tennis, and she's someone who, at the U.S. Open, when I go— is going to be at the top of my list as far as players who I'm going to want to see. So one more time, huge congrats to Krejcikova and her fans. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.